my dear and beloved brothers and sisters warm greetings in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ and a warm welcome to this um, discussion what we had been um, dealing on the untamable tongue for a very very long time now this is our third episode and we kicked off uh, chapter one today and i hope and i strongly believe that you had gone through the other two episodes where we have done 19 sessions that is 19 hours of material where we have taken you through a journey of things um, varieties of topics as how we must be controlling our tongue how we must be using the words of our mouth and what god likes what god dislikes and what um, kind of words are constructive and what kind of words are destructive and to be very honest we had also discussed how the words of the mouth has might to separate us from the love of god and the same words of the mouth also can unite us with god bring us closer to god reconcile us with god and with his love again what we had lost once upon a time because of our shortcomings because of all kind of uh, sinful deeds that had kept us away far away from 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 the love of the father on on which we have discussed a lot so therefore i won't be rewinding those things um, i really would want you to take a look at episode 1 episode 2 we discussed up uh, from the life of jesus how jesus made the best use of his words and without a doubt you know i know all of us know the words of jesus christ the lord were always constructive it is only to heal people it is only to do good to people it is only to correct people it is only to get people closer to god or talk about certain revelations about the future or futuristic perspective right that that there isn't a single instance that i could think of or i could recollect from the bible that jesus waste, wasted even a single word there isn't any any instance like that from bible and if he had done that that itself would have become a sin because matthew 12 36 says for every idle word that you speak you will have to give an account which means you will have to give an account because it is sinful right and jesus was very careful uh not just very careful he enjoyed speaking the right things at the right time and uh, most of the time it was uh, to the community which was in hunger right they wanted these kind of words of encouragement not just pep talks motivational uh, paraphrases or motivational sessions but it is to more of helping people who were in scarcity of words right they were moving around but they would not hear any teaching like this what kind of teaching is this with what authority he talks these were the exclaiming words from the audience right these were the reactions of the audience uh, because they hadn't um, gone through any kind of teachings like these kind uh, before right they go to the synagogue and even today also a lot of traditional churches um, they speak very traditionally right even reading the word of god so the lord said to moses gather to me 70 men of the elders of israel now i'm in the book of numbers that's where we are going to get into uh, meditation see this is the kind of tone they used to even read bible why because that is also tradition <laughs> how to read the bible is also a tradition stand up it's a tradition standing up is a tradition sitting down is a tradition singing songs only the old traditional hymns well i'm a great lover of the old traditional hymns by the way i want you to know and these recent day songs are like love songs you know um, it's it's romantic and you know or or it's pop song rock song right i i love feel a lot of satanic flavor in the song that has been composed these days not all but at least 7 out of 10 songs are of that kind um therefore i'm still a great lover of those traditional songs the olden days hymns being written by the men of god yeah and every song that you hear there is a history behind those songs people gave their life and breath dedication sincerity sacrifices you don't see such things in today's songs okay why did i quote this example 
the example was quoted because people live in the olden days tradition um on the topics where they are not supposed to be and on the topics <clears throat> that they are supposed to live they don't live am i confusing you thoroughly <laughs> what i'm trying to say is the areas where you need to come out of tradition you prefer to stay there the areas where you need to stick to the olden tradition which is good good for your life good for your um you know doctrines principles to be preserved in an old traditional way there they get modernized they get into the contemporary world so that's where we all get into some sort of problems some sort of confusions misapprehensions and divisions in the church why you think these many congregations have resulted it's because one doesn't agree with the other but all of you read bible all of you say oh jesus is our god and savior then why these many divisions and that is where satan did a fantastic job i keep telling this and i appreciate that guy right as much as he has strived hard to divide the church did we all strive hard to unite the church bring in bring in together or feel that oneness and don't you think that is what bible preaches to us all right and what separates why am i describing this so much taking a long taking such a long time because the words of the mouth separates arguments happens debates happens contradiction happens yes misapprehension happens misconceptions happens all these things if you have to con- kind of, you know encompass into one word it is called as confusion and what is the trigger for confusion the words of the mouth right so we had dealt about these things in the second episode as how jesus so wonderfully well the words of wisdom he used in different instances with mother mary and um, and he was uh, dealing with the pharisees and uh, he was dealing with uh, the adulterous women who was brought for with with the conviction and so many things we saw about jesus right and um, he spoke to the israelites in a heated argument in john chapter 8 so i would strongly recommend please go through episode 2 very interesting to understand how jesus beautifully handles the words of his mouth in any situation and in any circumstance and situations that leads him to emotional outburst and situations that leads him to anger yeah once we also dealt with the, how he toppled that uh, table uh, money table money exchanges he drove them out and stuff like that one session we covered that so through all these sessions we have tons of things to learn from our god right from especially our savior jesus right so in this episode what we are going to de- uh, what we are going to deal predominantly is we are going to move to the third way of see i love varieties in discussions right and that's all about bible bible also brings in lots of varieties look at jesus why his preachings were so interesting parables not only a storyteller but through parables he conveys varieties of um you know uh lessons or varieties of meaning meaningful discussions he brings it through varieties right one parable is not like another parable one teaching is not like another teaching one preaching is not like another preaching yeah maybe there is lot of coincidence sorry lot of similarities in miracles yeah he healed the sick and all that but there also you see varieties yeah he heals the blind he heals the dumb he de- heals the mute he heals the deaf he heals uh, who are demon possessed and different types of demons he would cast one demon makes the guy to roll down on the ground with a shriveling noise and uh, foam coming out of his mouth the other demon is doing something else and yeah there are so many things jesus does in varieties why because one message cannot be conveyed in just one variety you will not understand why because human memory is like that it's so weak and second thing is humans a uh, human being's heart bible calls it a stout heart hard heart stiff neck rebellious and all that right why because we have this adamic sin ruling in our bodies and in our minds therefore we need to keep tapping it keep ta- tapping it you know you have seen the carpenters right they they keep chiseling they use the chisel and they you know carve the wood until they get that shape until the moment they are feeling quite satisfied and uh, <clears throat> you know meeting their expectations meeting their demand or f- suiting to the design or sometimes what happens is they make um, they, they they throw the wood calling it as scrap wood why because 
they kept on chiseling that there was this you know that one specific area where they couldn't get that um that that fineness that refined um uh, output right so they throw it similarly god is trying to carve you and me we are the wood in his heart like potter's uh, thing uh, which is written in the uh, book of ezekiel right uh, am i right i think so <laughs> but we all know this potter story right um and uh, we are like that clay in his hand very very carves the uh, it's like pottery he gets that nice vessel carving eh? engraved and carved and refined and fine tuned and that vessel is ready for usage why do why do the potter make the pot vessels to use right filling water fill and you know kind of using it for mostly used for you know filling the water and water is talking about the anointing right you are a vessel filled with that anointing therefore you are a useful vessel in the hands of the potter which is helpful to carry the anointing from one place to the other place and deliver the water to quench the taste thirst of the mankind see how well it comes no isn't it so you and i are the vessel in his hands likewise you can also imagine yourself as a piece of wood in the hands of carpenters right and jesus interestingly is a carpenter and he, he chisels every day chisels gently otherwise you will start bleeding no slowly he carves you slowly carves you. some areas some corners it's very sharp so they have to put some pressure and chisel it therefore uh, those are the times i'm talking about where you go through certain rough incidents some terrible sickness or terrible problems never ending why because those are corners where they have to carve you sharply to get that best and when you observe any kind of wooden art artifacts you know what is the beauty of the wooden artifact the kind of cuttings the the carvings right the carvings and that cuttings are the ones uh, which will add more beauty and that cutting is the most toughest thing to do and that's why it is so costly similarly but cutting that you know they need to apply pressure they put in that uh, that sharp um, what i say the sharp angle they will be cutting and uh, it breaks the wood breaks similarly god breaks us yes very good example right god breaks us by chiseling us sometimes why to get the best out of us therefore you go and appear like that wooden artifact before people they see the reflection of christ they see the reflection that glory of christ in you right and you will appear like that that beautiful varnished polished artifact and they keep it in the in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a, where do they keep such costly wooden artifacts in a place where everybody comes and admires that beauty admires that cost admires the workmanship in that artifact correct no similarly when you have grown in god people will ad not only admire you but they will admire god in you that's why it is important to go through these kind of varieties in studies therefore you understand see i am justifying one word variety you made me to talk for 5 minutes you all understand see god is a god who is so versatile dynamic right he doesn't stick to one thing because why he finds it so boring right you you find some kids at uh, in home no um, i mean in some homes i think most of the homes say all kids are naughty but there are some kids where you force them also they won't play they will sit and do something in their mobile phone or very lazy and all that children but there are some children they don't like playing one sport or one game oh 5 minutes they will be on this 10 minutes on that half an hour on this and then suddenly they will roll on the ground they have nothing to do mama give me something to eat naughty kids and i love them and i was one of those <laughs> right no that's what my mom used to say and i also remember not a mischievous style but very active i just cannot do one thing at a time 10 things at a time but then slowly god carved me in such a way that i learned to do one thing as a masterpiece and not 10 things at the same time but i'll keep doing different things varieties right it's a, it's a diversified kind of um, attitude you and i need to build sorry i took little longer why i am saying all this is beloved this is the way how you need to read bible why people read my bible multiple times because the words of god conveys different meaning 
different revelations, different manifestations each time when you go through it. That's why very important. Don't be so complacent and satisfied. Oh, I read the Bible once. Only once. That means you got one revelation. You read 10 times, 10 revelation. You're all good at mathematics. 100 times, 100 revelation. Right? You have 66 books in this Bible. And you have, what, how many chapters are there totally? Anybody sat and counted how many number of... I didn't count, but I just put in a... Um, puzzle before you to see if one of you have done this or not. Somebody has counted it. There are 1189 chapters, which means every chapter has to convey one message. That means you need to read Bible at least 1189 times, right? To get a different message. <laughs> You're all looking at me. What brother? <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to be possible in my lifetime. That's why I'm giving you this exercise. Why? To keep you engaged. And that's why God emphasizes you. Don't do it as a traditional exercise. 1,189 times. Okay, I have read it 100 times. Again, 101th time. Second time. What did you learn each time? It should be different. And it will be different. I can definitely uh, tell you this with all truth and honesty. Holy Spirit is so so merciful and kind that he will keep revealing different things and it's going to it's only going to help you to grow further in your spiritual walk with god okay once again a warm welcome to this episode so i just took that initial few minutes to set the context because it's the first chapter no so i thought i will spend little time in setting the context okay so this episode why we kicked off is we want to study from the life of israelites very complicated people. While I say that, don't ever think you are such an easygoing person and God loves you and he would love to kiss you. No, you are also like them. In fact, you know what? You and I are worse than them. Why? Because they didn't have Jesus. And even today also, I really feel pity on the Israelites. They have never accepted Jesus. But you and I have accepted Jesus, which means we have more light on our lives. But how is our spiritual quality? What is our spiritual health? You, you only can justify that because you are the best judge to yourself. No one can judge you other than yourself. And this is your great opportunity to judge yourself and correct things during grace period. Why? Because if God would step down in the day of judgment, not step down, actually, if he, if he's seated on the white throne and if he's going to start judging, you don't have a second chance. I keep telling this. I don't have a second chance. At least I'm very clear that to rectify my mistakes, and ask, seek God's help to correct. And I'm not worried about rapture. Absolutely. I'm not worried about this tribulation. Absolutely. Why? Because I'm a great believer in this grace period that now God is not going to come very soon. I have my time, but I won't take it for granted. Right? If you think, oh, grace period is there. No, God won't come. So let me continue to sin. Not in that angle. I have enough time because the mercies of God are everlasting and greater than rapture. If he was such an, in a, such a rush to come down again for the second time, he would have come immediately after 100 years since the time he was taken up. 2000 years passed by. He is still waiting for you and I to repent and get the best out of you. Are you giving the best to God? God is readily waiting to get the best out of you. Are you giving the best? Yes. John 1.12 says that you need to receive him. The more you receive him, the best comes out of you is what you and I need to realize each day. But as many as have received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Right? You, you have the right to become the children of God. All that you need to do is, you don't have to walk on the tight rope, tied between one end of the mountain to the other end of the mountain with a stick in your hand for balancing. Is it so tough to get into Christian life and receive the name of Jesus, all that you need to do is repent and do not sin. That is the mantra. Right? That is the doctrine you and I need to stick to. You and I need to stick to. But it's not easy. Because if you are repenting and do not, you are not sinning, you are fulfilling all the laws and commandments spontaneously. Naturally, all the laws and commandments of the Bible will be fulfilled. Why? Everything is encompassed. That's why John the Baptist was sent before Jesus came. To convey this message. Therefore he was able to bring people to some shape. Some level. Then Jesus came. He heals people. 
he does miracles he gives to the poor he helps the poor but he conveys one message sternly towards the end hey sin no more why because a world sir thing can come and cling you it will separate you from the love of god you will have to burn in the lake of fire you will miss eternity in the paradise in heaven so please don't do this he will request but the same jesus will not request for the second time when he comes he will come and fight wage war revelation 19 you take and read i really get terrified and revelation 20 also okay so now in this session what we are going to deal is i mean in this entire episode two things we are going to do number one we will see how many our sessions it takes i don't know if there is a need i will go for episode 4 but it depends two things i want to do here one is we are going to discuss from the life of israelites especially we are going to circle it what is the episode all about about untamable tongue the words of your mouth the words of your mouth are so so dangerous so so powerful dangerous in the sense can separate you from god powerful in the sense it can reconcile you with god and you can also bring people to god and you can also win souls for god and you can be constructive constructive or destructive determines what kind of words proceeds out of your mouth man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god what is that mouth of god your mouth only because you are made in god's image your mouth is not borrowed from your neighbor it is god's mouth that's what they said matthew 4 4 jesus says this no so we are going to discuss two topics one is about the life of israelites where they murmured grumbled complained irritated god annoyed him and then forced him to punish them forcing to punish somebody uh, is like absolute it's the extremity of foolishness you understand huh? you know you do something like this that guy will get angry you go and keep irritating him until he gets extremely red hot and you imagine what will happen already that guy is so terrible i'm not talking about god i'm talking about some xyz person right maybe your boss you know what he likes what he dislikes how you behave whatever he dislikes you will make a list you will keep memorizing it number 1 i should not wear this dress number 2 i should not smile like this number 3 i should not walk like this number 4 i should not type like this you have a big list why because not even a single thing should enter into that guy's head else it will be like a spark one spark in the forest you know builds a, makes it a forest fire you are very careful no then why are you not having the same attitude with god i god no everlasting mercies no bound to mercy compassionate no, god of love the same god is an angry god that's what i'm going to show it to you now don't look at him like that cartoon angry bird no 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 through it all he's trying to convey something you people are tempting me you people are pushing me so hard that i need to punish therefore to set you as an example to the upcoming generations that they will not tempt god test god do you really need to build your life in such a way that you need to become these bad examples rotten apples in that basket don't you want to do mighty things for god and be good examples like our lord jesus paul peter elijah elisa and all these guys no no or yes anyway we will see what answer you have at the end of this episode that's exactly what we are going to study in detail um what were the incidents how they could have beautifully handled things better and just the words of the mouth which proceeded to irritate god to push god to angry situations or anger uh, you are not able to believe na no? can words irritate words only irritates not your body language not your looks not your face because they all understand you are anyway tan you are ugly looking nobody is ugly looking don't worry all of our created in god's image for to them to some people right they are very fair and you are so tan they call you ugly who said no god looks at your heart so don't worry about your color and all that that's that be that itself becomes a racism kind of thing i'm not here to talk about that all are equal all are beautiful in the eyes of god you know that so don't worry who you are what i'm trying to say here is the words of the mouth are so powerful that it can even push a compassionate father to get angry and we are going to deal with that subject a lot from bible right not my own fairy tales second thing what we are going to discuss is 
let let's it depends how much time we may have or i may have to create a separate episode we are going to deal again from the book of james chapter 3 remember i am not yet done with james 3 i took a break from james 3 went to life traveled all the way to discuss about the life of jesus then again i am traveling to discuss about the life of israelites i will be coming back to the book of james to discuss from where we left verses 13 to 18 it talks about heavenly versus demonic wisdom and i have lots to describe from those paraphrases and therefore we can study those things together all right enough of the introduction i won't introduce i won't repeat this again and again in other chapters um, or other sessions this is our first chapter and third episode warm welcome now we will be dealing from the book of numbers and chapter 14 um in in the, in the book of 14 we will be dealing through multiple occasions multiple incidents and uh, again remember we are talking about the first section as how people irritate moses mentions that these 10 times you irritated god in wilderness you provoked him to anger and i am going to position my uh, discussion on these 10 times what are those 10 times 10 uh you know 10 pl- plagues god permitted to show his glory these 10 times again these guys are sending plagues in the heart of god to show the real truth that mankind is no better mankind is the worst that god has ever seen god never punished any of his creations have you seen god punishing any lioness or lion or uh, elephant or even ants amoeba everything that god created are so obedient that god will not have to punish but this man why did i at all create these guys god felt so sad in his heart i mean he he had a regret in his heart bible says in genesis 6 so uh, genesis 6 6 i can never forget this and i always wonder is there a moment in my life would god get re- you know uh, uh, would god get reminded of this Genesis 6:6 and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart right this is the first grieving and the another grieving verse i know who's that you know holy spirit your friend living inside you see at least god is outside he is he is living in heaven and he watches over everyone therefore he doesn't have that nasty experience only thing he is having that feeling and he is able to see but you are giving even a nasty experience million times more than god making that statement in genesis 66 ephesians 430 it tells us and do not grieve the holy spirit of god by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption you know why that is worse than this because he living inside of you all the nasty things dirty things lustful things he has to watch and you call on the name of see moment you start doing any unholy things or unholy deeds never assume holy spirit is still living in you tolerating all of this no he is holy and he will flee away from you he will immediately change his train and he will leave that station okay but when you call him back in the name of jesus what happens he comes again and that is the uh, beauty right that is the power in the name of jesus and in his precious blood that you and i have and therefore you and i don't have to even think whether the holy spirit is again made an entry into our lives yes but it depends how truly you have repent uh, how true how true is your repentance and how consistent you are going to walk how stable is your mindset right many people many people play with the holy spirit that's why bible says jesus said you can use my name in any context in any form don't play with holy spirit you will definitely taste god's anger god's judgment will be harsh on you why because you are playing in the name of jesus like a magic word magic holy spirit come in the name of jesus he will come but you know with what heart he will come with a sober heart with a grievous heart bible says in romans 8:26 he is the lord the holy spirit who will pray with a groaning and grieving spirit coming inside of you yet you are not completely out of those habits because of which he once left this temple of god right you are calling him again in the name of jesus 
like a hypocrite acting before god he comes because why you have that second chance that's grace period god is merciful but definitely don't forget you will have to give an account of how you have harassed harassed the holy spirit you have harassed him enough it's a harassment right you call him pretending as if you have repented present pretending as if you have given away that bad habit but the moment he comes in he sees the same nasty behavior and then again he has to leave the spot why because he is holy there can't be any other reasons right he is holy and he cannot tolerate he cannot take these things in and he leaves again you call him acting and he comes again he leaves again he comes again he leaves you are harassing the holy spirit right like as much as i have explained about this harassment of holy spirit these people of israel uh, or israeli folks they too harassed uh, father god right while he was walking with them in the midst of them as a pillar of cloud and throne of fire in the night electricity was given what god himself burned as a lamp in front of them full electricity wherever they went they never lived in darkness and in the morning they never felt the scorch of the heat right they were protected with a you know cloud pillar of cloud and they had that and none of these guys felt sick all along this 40 years in wilderness history says if god would have taken them in the right pathway it would have taken only 12 days of journey but because of their rebellious attitude he had to test them test them test them refine them refine them refine them why because his own son will be born through this race right and therefore he needs to perfect it in such a way he needs to churn them and carve them the same example right the potter's example and the wood example i gave he needs to carve them and win that respect from them for a son of god to be born that's why it took 40 long years what they could have covered in 12 days or you travel by car you could cover in just 5 hours you aircraft 45 minutes can you imagine where is 45 minutes 5 hours and 12 days god took 40 years sometimes in your life some things are taking a long time you are not blessed by god and you are not able to achieve what you want to there is a delay significant delay you are stuck in a same place you are stagnant there is no growth spiritually materially beloved i am telling you there is something rebellious in your heart beloved i can re- definitely assure you that there is a uh, wilderness spirit in your heart wilderness spirit the experience which they gave to god right the rebellious spirit i call it as wilderness spirit right it is in your heart and you for sad reasons many christians don't even realize they are into these kind of things that's why it's important you attend sessions like this and after you understand the concepts better you understand the meaning of the spiritual walk they didn't understand therefore they are living like this but that's not applicable for the israeli folks because why god revealed it each time that he is angry why because he punished people he killed them 10 times killed people in mass yet again they would be rebelling oh my goodness what kind of heart is that that's why all the people who stepped out of the bondage right that they had been in uh, the land of egypt for 400 years god delivered them and brought them out not a single guy made their entry into the land of canaan flowing with milk and honey then who entered the children who were born on who were who were born to them in the wilderness they grew up they understood this god better and they also ended up becoming a being a rebellious generation and they did even worse things than their forefathers that's what judges says that's what um, you know the other books chronicles and all you can see right they did even more evil things can you imagine the mindset of god genesis 66 again i'm sure you would have regret you would have felt sorry enough why at all i created these people i could have created another bigger and stronger and mighty and powerful angel million times bigger than lucifer who became devil i had all trust in him but instead i created somebody in my own image <laughs> can you believe what would be the mind? if you were god how how would you lead your life every day i don't know how god is so tolerant so patient so loving so compassionate having seen generations 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 nobody understood 
i get reminded of one words see i'm not able to step into the session yet i'm sorry i cannot rush why you all know me right heaven is not a rush so i am also not a rush psalm 142 the lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men now you understand this better to see if there are any who understand who see god right generations after generations nobody understood there are only very few guys god is very fond of favorites number one is david why even david committed lot of mistakes if you look, if you read the biography of david about david also i think i will be doing a session but then this guy is the one who understood god to some extent and since he has understood god to some extent he became he becomes god's beloved servant my beloved servant my faithful servant who will not turn to the right or to the left is it true actually it's not true but what to do look at the state of god he is the only guy who understood god at least 10% i'm just throwing a number just to quantify it okay if david himself understood god only 10% imagine your state and my state if god appears right in front of you you think he is going to hug you and kiss you and make the same statement oh my beloved servant whose heart doesn't turn to the right or to the left but his spirit always follows my spirit ah true is it always you need to get into such imaginations if god were to come here and testify if god were to come here and witness bible says jesus will witness us if you are truly walking blameless and honest before god but these fellows never walked according to the will of god why because they never understood god why because they were rebellious every time getting into the realm of murmuring grumbling complaining always waging war with god ha huh? head butting with him how would god feel tell me i will tell you, i will show you how god felt terrible it will be don't go through such experiences that's why i gave you many verses like god was grievous holy spirit is grievous and with a groaning spirit you make him pray make him pray every word of prayer that holy spirit makes ha huh? because of this groaning incidents and grieving incidents or grievous incidents that you instill in the holy spirit forget not you will have to give an account every word of prayer don't take pride in it okay ah if i even if i miss something holy spirit is praying even if holy spirit misses in intercessor is praying who jesus you treat them as your maid servants correct or not those prayers will appear meaningless on the day of judgment why because of your rebellious attitude you grieved them yet they couldn't give you up why because you are creation of god they see that image of god the spirit of god therefore they are not ready to give up in tears they pray in tears they cry out i'm talking about jesus and holy spirit you will have to give an account you will have to give an account i'm not threatening you i'm not telling you some horror stories here i'm telling you the truth beloved this is your chance let's get into the session now numbers 14 verses 22 23 20 21 23 will be our first meditating meditation words and then we will see many such incidents from the book of numbers again okay um i will read in a flow i will read then we will sit together and meditate and, and with that we will close okay already my time is gone then the lord said i have pardoned according to your word but truly as i live all the earth shall be filled with the glory of god because verse number 20 to all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which i did in egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test now these 10 times and have not heeded my voice you, you see the testimony if god were to appear here and make the same testimony where will you keep your face tell me eyes downcast huh yeah? with heads bowed down this is how some mischievous student will be standing in front of the teachers now when they yell at them like that innocent uh, smile and all that that won't help you unfortunately that won't take you to heaven maybe the teacher will forget you or, sorry forgive you and give you a second chance but not our god why because he is not just a strict god but he is not god of partiality he is just god even if he wants to forgive he couldn't even spare his only son 
that's what bible says you and i we are finished i'm telling you look at this statement right verse number 23 they, they certainly number 14 23 they certainly shall not see the land of which i swore to their fathers nor shall any of those who rejected me see it now god proclaims a judgment here because he is sick and tired of seeing these guys behaving nastily behaving dirtily behaving rebellious always you know contradicting contending with god always pulling him for a fight quarreling rebellious he is sick and tired i have seen this enough in the book of numbers the fifth book of torah fifth book no sorry fourth book deuteronomy is the fifth one okay he doesn't want to allow this to happen why because these people will become a bad example they you know the generations to come they will start taking god for granted and he doesn't would want that to happen setting bad examples right and he says whatever promises i made to your fathers you never stuck to it like fathers were what abraham isaac jacob joseph and then moses was born right not too long ago it happened only like you know few centuries and they wouldn't have forgotten those people so easily and how they lived according to the word of god one option is to understand this phrase as a you know um what to say as a number or a uh, what to say rhetorical number right it would be similar to a parent saying to a child i have told you 10 times to clean your room in india especially they will pick some number 1000 times i would have told him brother really <laughs> it doesn't actually translate to the number in literal tense what does it mean is i have told him as many as number of times possible the guy is not listening my daughter is not listening my son is not listening this is what you know god would be sitting there and looking at his own son have you seen anywhere in bible god cribbing no but you think really god would not crib he would crib he would not murmur or grumble but then cribbing is something like you know um you call up your wife uh, on I mean, wife is not a bad example sometimes about your wife only you crib <laughs> just joking so sometimes you call up the mo- the most beloved whom you trust and whom you love and all that and you start talking about all that happened at your workplace right you enter into home uh, is, uh, imagine your uh, your wife is homemaker and she comes with a cup of coffee darling what happened why honey you are looking so sad and then you start talking hey you know what happened my boss started behaving like an animal <laughs> and this is what has happened and etc you sh- right you start sharing such experiences and if you were to look at all the experiences between god and his only son because only those two are sitting there in heaven paradise big heaven big god big jesus big throne can you imagine god would be cribbing about these guys not murmuring but uh, what to say out of that sorrowful heart you feel so sorry and then you start talking what more can i do to this generation my son i sent you man they killed you they brutally harassed you and now still they are continuing to harass the holy spirit whom you had left right like that's what it means i'm just exaggerating and explaining what god literally meant what is meant by these 10 times right and the parent has not necessarily communicated with the child exactly 10 times right i'm just taking a case study here an example between a child and a parent the point is that there have been countless times that communication has been made right and uh, the, many people working in corporate will understand right they will give you a warning then they will put you in a performance improvement plan then also you don't improve then they ask you to find some other job within the same company rotation then also you don't clear interviews they finally show the door terminating you this is the process generally happens why all these steps are like means of communication giving you that second chance giving you that opportunity and therefore you try to learn from your mistakes you understand that is the reason 
God meant ten times, meaning countless times I have communicated to them, made it very clear. Hey, it irritates me because why? It's unholy. I cannot even look at those things. Zechariah four ten. You get it right. It's not about the numbers to be translated uh, literally, but it's it's about the countless number of times that Jesus or sorry, the Father God will have to communicate to these fellows and they are not ready to listen. In the numbers passage, the point would be that the Lord has been persevering with these people, their behavior, their attitude, and they don't understand. Psalm 14, I read a verse for you, right? He looks down and he searches across the ends of the earth. Is there no one who understands me? Am I so worthless? Don't you understand my sovereignty? The nature understands, the angels understand. Yeah, the birds of the air and the waters of the sea, they don't cross their boundaries. And I don't forget the birds of the air and that's why they love me. I have not forgotten you, but you don't love me, right? So through countless in, in, in illustrations of these rebellious behavior, God had been communicating. He's been conveying a very strong and stern message. Hey, you know what? You're pushing me almost to the extremity of my patience. Right? There is an upper limit for his patience. I will read one beautiful verse. Psalm 103, verse 9. Psalm 103, I know, brother, I know, brother. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Yes, that is 1 and 2. But after that, nobody reads anything in that chapter. Very important words. Psalm 103, 9. He will not always... No, I will read 8 also. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. Everybody will stick to this. Okay. And verse 9, people will make a high jump and go. I will tell you what. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. What does it mean? We all know that mathematics, no? That infinity. Um, and uh, uh, there is an upper limit. We always do that calculation. See, I'm not a great mathematician. I'm really bad at mathematics. Uh, but I'm just telling you this, right? The upper limit. This verse means he will not strive with this, uh, with, with the spirit of man forever. Neither will he, will he hold his anger. Which means, each time you irritate God, you need to have this question in your mind: Is this that? Is this chance going to be the nth chance? Right? N equal to that number of chances. Only God knows. For example, for me, he would have said that upper limit as one hundred thousand. For you, it, it could be maybe. 10,000 only, then what would you do, right? Each time you sin, you need to ask God or you need to ask your heart, is this Proverbs, sorry, Phil, is this going to be uh, Psalms 103, uh, 9, that today I have crossed that upper limit? Then where would you get this courage? Where would you get this guts? Where would you get this rebellious attitude? Don't you think that is rightly to be called as godly fear? But godly fear is not about God threatening you and making you to walk. Some children know they will be really scared of their parents. Why? Because they will manhandle them. In India is quite common. Children will get beatings from their uh, parents. Nowadays it's okay. Parents have changed a bit. But uh, it, it's very common. Right? And they are very scared of what? Beatings. But... That's not the godly fear, what God expects from you and me. It's godly fear out of respect. Respect for his love, respect for his compassion, respect for his mercy, grace, truth, sovereignty. That's fear, right? In um, many houses, when the father walks in, immediately the children, wife, everybody, they stand or they move away. Father is coming back from work. What does it mean? It means one way that they're scared because he's such a rough guy or maybe short-tempered, etc. The other way is so much of respect for the father. Oh, my father is coming in. I can't even sit. I can't sit. That's a sign of disrespect. He immediately rise up and he will say, sit down, sit down. And he will be moving in. Right? When a boss walks into his office, right? whoever sits in their cabin, they will rise up and say, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. He will say, okay, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Sit down, sit down. Sign of respect. But how much ever he tells them, hey, don't have to wish me and all that. No, that comes automatically, naturally. Why? Because that sign of respect. Respect for what? Respect for his position because he's boss. Yeah. You, you need to do all that gimmicks and, you know, butter his shoes and all that. 
so why because you need to kind of survive in that company right that is not the kind of respect god expects but you see how much i've done for you guys man you are just a inch away from pharaoh killing your people and throwing you into the sea you know you will you would have become food for those fishes in the sea but what did i do is there any miracle that you could ever witness in your life or had you ever heard of such things but you have gone through the water standing like heaps like walls on either sides you are able to touch the water probably the water kissed you saying that hey thanks for giving us this beautiful experience we have never done god has never dealt with us in this way today we got that respect and honor from god it's because of you i'm just narrating it like a poem <laughs> right god asks you them to remember but they would not they ill treat god you and i also have such experiences now how many wonders god would have done in our lives how many things he would have taken care how many things he would have provisioned when you were lying in the sick bed or your beloved loved near and dear ones were lying in the sick bed and they you wanted some redemption and god healed them miraculously you all forgotten you have forgotten all of those and you behave why because all is well in your life you think it takes too much of time for god to bring back that sickness or maybe even a worse sickness or a worse accident yeah mere mis accident your life uh, you know got saved why because one angel was deployed by god to protect you you think it's so hard for god to bring another accident where you will be thrown from that 60 foot bridge down under and you will be you know will have to be taken to the hospital in pieces like how jezebel when she was thrown from the top never think you know god would not do all of these things why because he will not hold his anger forever bible says and what does god do when he gets angry old testament god i will show you how old testament god before jesus came behaved um no were made to behave actually he did not behave that is not part of his dna it's not his natural behavior he's god of love compassion slow to anger bound to mercy some 145 8 and 9 some 103 11 some 147 11 you take and read some is a 55 you take and read it shows about his mercies which money cannot buy your character cannot buy your deeds cannot buy it just comes out of mercy why because he understands man is dust and adam is in his ruling in him he understands but do you understand who god is do you at least make an effort to change no they did not change why what made them not to change what held them back all the time grumbling and murmuring beloved the words of their mouth that's exactly what i'm trying to say their behavior and attitude were demonstrated through the words of their mouth in other words the words of their mouth reflected or was a reflection of their attitude and behavior and the kind of disrespect instead of respect they had the disrespect for god that's why i gave you some practical illustrations from indian culture right and when father is gone mother is the only survivor you know how much the family respects that mother many people go touch their feet in hindu families christian families don't have to do it nobody touches anybody feet anybody's feet because we all are under one person's feet and his name is yahweh god but i'm telling you the hindu culture tradition taught them they need to show the sign of respect by touching their feet and getting their blessings what does it mean a sign of respect yeah god respects the mankind so much that he sent his only beloved son to be laid as a curse <laughs> not, not to be laid as a baby prince in the manger somewhere in the palace no as a curse hanging naked brutally killed he love you you are going to question god's love just because your situation is not that great and you forgot everything so quickly in the similar situations during the past how god could, could, took good care of you so was the mindset of these israeli people they forgot everything they forgot they were one inch away from the pharaoh's soldiers getting killed the pillar of throne came sorry the throne of fire came and stopped these guys whole night god made that east wind to pass across the sea and it split the sea it's not like how you show we see in the movie moses lifts up the stick and immediately the red sea splits into two no no whole night 
he made the nature to change its reactions change its behavior god is the one who controls nature right he made the nature to bow down before the love he had for the israelis or before the love he had for the mankind the wind started moving and then it split the red sea and the throne of fire was there guarding these people not allowing pharaoh to cross an inch or move an inch and these people all travel all the 6 million people travel travel with their children with their belongings with their herds of cattle with their flocks of sheep and stuff like that all of them are able to cross and then god made pharaoh to come and he buried them in the sea never such an incident had been ever witnessed nobody can witness who can control the nature our god <clears throat> right now it was testing god another option is to understand the phrase as actual number this would mean then that the lord has been tested actually 10 times by the behavior of the people i'm still stuck to that one word or two words 10 times and i'm taking some time to explain more from the bible what made these people to test god what instrument they used words of their mouth inappropriate words irritating words regardless of which option one might choose <coughs> excuse me based on the evidence available it is important to have an understanding of what it means to test the lord that's the point it's not about 10 times 20 times even once jesus never tested or tempted the father why because he was hungry for 40 days in the wilderness jesus was sent into the wilderness to be tested but he never made a choice to test back the lord although he had an opportunity given by devil what it's a valid opportunity genuine opportunity very genuine incident isn't it right is there anything wrong for jesus tempting god saying that father 40 days i've been hungry and the certain fellow saying something reasonable um he's asking me to ask you bread and he's you are going to give in the sense i have to turn the stone to bread and can you please permit jesus would not ask why i told you this before jesus never used his powers for his own service he used those powers to only serve the mankind that's the attitude of a believer that must be the attitude of a believer right if you had true respect of god or in god you will never make an effort to test him or tempt him or push him to the corner urge him give me this now if you don't give i'm not believing you have you seen christians praying like this why christians brother i myself used to pray like this <laughs> is it what you're saying see i'm not a innocent i'm not a saint here right i also did that kind of nonsense in my life i used to tell god unless you give me this i will not believe you and now i am hearing what god would have probably told me is so what you are the loser not me <laughs> don't believe and don't receive please go to hell do you think god cannot say this actually he said this right in revelation 22 11 those who are filthy let them be more filthy those who are unrighteous unholy let them be more unholy those that are stupids and idiots let them be more stupids and idiots that's what it means you never make an effort to understand god like this israeli folks right so it is important to have an understanding of what it means to test the lord test the lord means simple if you are not ready to wait in patience if you are not ready to ask things or place the petitions supplications politely on the feet of the lord and leave it to his will that's what jesus did man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god that proceeds from his mouth my father is well aware that i am definitely hungry and starving and thirsty but i will wait he will deploy angels he will give me the food miraculously right probably he will send the same crow raven from heaven which fed elijah to feed me god can do wonders who are you dirty devil that's what jesus says a clue is provided for us in um numbers 14 11 with that we will close uh, which is the lord's response to the people um in that situation right and the lord said to moses how long will these people reject me 
and how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? Right? I already spoke about this. And he says, I will strike them with a pestilence and disinherit them. Disinherit them means what? You, your rebellious, some parents do this, right? The rebellious child who is drug addict and spending father's money, wasting money, time, everything. He will say, get out of my house. You are no more my child. And they will go to such an extent, they will go to the register office and they will deregister. He is not my son anymore. He is an orphan. I don't know whether such a law is there or not, but I'm just thinking. If that were the case of a father who is irritated, he says, I will disinherit them. I will not even say that I will make them a mighty nation, a greater and mightier than I. And uh, sorry, I will make you a nation mightier and greater. He calls Moses, you alone come. I will burn them, blow them in one shot. But Moses pleads and you know that, right? After that. So what I'm trying to say here is, these guys have not even understood that they have tested God to such an extent that God is ready to disown them, disinherit them. My goodness. You and I, if we are in this situation, I wonder, I wonder what would be our state in this world? Or have you realized each time? That's why I'm asking you, please, today, I'm going to end this session now. Please, today, when you pray, check out your heart. Whether God is, if God were to appear, would he make such a statement as how he spoke about the Israelites? Or would he make such a statement how he spoke to Moses saying, Moses, you alone come. I will make you a great nation. Are you Moses? Or are you having this <clears throat> rebellious attitude like this people of Israel? Eyes closed and heads bow down. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and fellowship with all my beloved brothers and sisters. Thank you for taking us into the third episode where how we have to conduct ourselves through the words of our mouth. And every word of our mouth really matters and determines our character before God, whether we are looked at look like rebellions by God or whether we are look like these obedient children of God like Jesus, Moses. Lord, help us to stay by your side. Help us giving that sense of realization. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Stay tuned. I will come and meet you soon with chapter number two and we will continue to study from the life of Israelites. Hope you are all enjoying and please subscribe to our channel and get access to our playlist and listen to all the videos. Please pass it to your friends and relatives. God bless you.